All right. We're back to trig, and we're talking today about the sum difference in double angle formulas. Um, and so, if you're just looking at the, the front page here, you can see that the idea is that sometimes you have uh, two angles. In this case, we're calling them alpha and beta, more Greek letters. Um, and that uh, sometimes you want to talk about what happens if you add those angles and you get alpha plus beta. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and lay this out. Sometimes we want to compute sine and cosine of um, the sum of two angles. Uh, if you came to class and you saw the sneak preview of what was going to be in this video, you remember we had this little chant. Um, I guess by popular demand we're going to do this now. When you uh, want to remember what the formulas are, uh, what you do is you think in your head and you think you're at this football game and uh, you're cheering on sine and cosine, it goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, and that the little clap is important, and the reason it's important um, is because when you clap, you put a minus sign down, and again you think sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, clap, sine, sine, and this helps you write down the sine and the cosine uh, sum formulas, and what we put um, all the way across, let me go ahead and so the new color here is, we're going to just put alpha and beta all the way across. Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, beta. And that's it. That's really exactly how you should be remembering uh, the sum formulas. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, clap, sine, sine. And, um... It's, it's ridiculous, but I promise that will force it to stay inside of your head. Um, and let's talk about why something like this is totally useful. Um, if I start writing out um, the sums of certain angles, so suppose I add pi over 4 to um, 2 pi over 3, then what I get is 11 pi over 12. And the utility here is that 11 pi over 12 is an angle you know nothing about. This angle is just nothing but confusion. But pi over 4 and 2 pi over 3, both of these angles are things you know lots of stuff about. Um, and so if you wanted to compute sine of 11 pi over 12 or cosine of 11 pi over 12, all you would have to do is know what sine and cosine of pi over 4 and 2 pi over 3 are. And so let's go ahead and do that. We know that sine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2. That cosine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2 and sine of 2 pi over 3 and cosine of 2 pi over 3 now we have to be careful we don't actually know what those are but we can use reference angles so here's 2 pi over 3 and remember the reference angle is just the angle necessary to get back down to the x-axis. In this case, the reference angle is pi over 3. And we have to use our quadrant rules to tell us that in this quadrant, only sine is going to be positive. And so this is the same as sine of pi over 3. And um, sine of pi over 3 is red. 3 over 2, and this is negative cosine of pi over 3, and it's negative because in quadrant 2 we're negative, and um, so it's uh, negative 1 half. Now, we have all of the values and so we can go ahead and compute 
sine of 11 pi over 12 because we know it's sine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3 and if we look back sine of alpha plus beta, the top one it goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine so it's going to be sine of pi over 4 cosine of 2 pi over 3 sine, cosine, cosine, sine plus cosine of pi over 4 sine of 2 pi over 3 and then just go ahead and fill in the values that we computed up top sine of pi over 4 is right 2 over 2 cosine of 2 pi over 3 is um, negative 1 half plus cosine of pi over 4 which is rad 2 over 2 times sine of 2 pi over 3 which is rad 3 over 2 and what we get on the left rad 2 times negative 1 is negative rad 2 over 4 plus rad 2 times rad 3 is rad 6 over 4 and if you write this nicely we get radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4 and there's our final answer and we were able to do this because, again, um, it takes a bad angle, breaks it into the sum of two very nice angles, and uh, it allows us to just write it as a product of a bunch of sines and cosines that we do know. Let's do um, another example. Let's take two angles that are reasonably easy to compute. For example, if we take pi over 4 plus pi over 6, um, we get 5 pi over 12, another over 12 here. And so suppose I wanted cosine of 5 pi over 12. Well, let's go back and look at our rule for cosine. This is the cosine, cosine, clap sine, sine. And so we're going to do cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. And what we're going to put here are the two angles that um, added up, pi over 4, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 6, the two angles that added up to give us the 5 pi over 12. And again, you always want to write them in terms of angles that you know values of sine and cosine for. Well, we know cosine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2, and cosine of pi over 6 is rad 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2, and sine of pi over 6 is a half. And so we get radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4. Well, that's weird. It's the same thing as sine of 11 pi over 12. And I guess if we think about this, this really isn't that weird at all. We should remember that sine of theta plus pi over 2 is just cosine of theta. And so if you replace the 11 pi over 12 with that minus pi over 2, you get 5 pi over 12, and we just have to change to cosine. And it's why we got the same value here. So, now that we have the addition formulas, let's talk about a couple other things. Let's let alpha and beta be the same. So in particular, let's do the calculation for sine of theta plus theta, and the calculation for cosine of theta plus theta. Well, we get sine, cosine, cosine, sine, and all of these are now thetas. Not equals plus theta, theta. And cosine times sine and sine times cosine, if they're both theta, are the same. 
And so what we get is 2 sine theta cosine theta. This is important. This is equal to the sine of 2 theta. And so this becomes a totally new rule for us. This is cosine theta cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta which is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So this is cosine of 2 theta. And let me go ahead and write this down. If you remember, you have um, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared, and cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared, we can actually rewrite um, the most recent rule here, cosine squared minus sine squared, um, with only sines or cosines by replacing either the cosine squared here or replacing the sine squared here with the things down here. And so we also get that cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, or that cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So here we get three new rules, all of which are equivalent. And these are three ways we can replace cosine of a double angle. So let me give you another example. Suppose I told you that you had a triangle it was a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? And I asked you, what was cosine of 2 theta and what was sine of 2 theta? Okay, this is where knowing the replacement rules comes in handy. Sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Sine theta, remember, in the back of your head, you should be thinking SOKATOA. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so we have 2 times 4 fifths times cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, 3 fifths. 2 times 4 is 8 times 3 is 24, all over 25. So if um, we increase the angle to double its angle, um, we're not necessarily going to get a 3, 4, 5 triangle anymore, but our sine will be 24 over 25. Okay, and let's look at cosine of 2 theta. We can do this a bunch of different ways, but let's do cosine squared minus sine squared. Just because we recently computed both of them, might as well use them both. Um, remember, cosine is uh, 3 fifths. So we get 3 fifths squared minus 4 fifths squared. And on top, we get 9 minus 16, which is negative 7. And on the bottom, we get our 25. And so that's also incredibly interesting. Um, right now, you can tell that um, for a triangle like this, theta would be, um, if we just drew it, it would just be in the first quadrant. If you doubled the angle, um, cosine of double the angle is negative. It means we had to have pushed into the second quadrant, right? Here's our 3, 4, 5, and here's our double angle pushing us into the second quadrant. Not very far. If you look at the cosine, it's not that big, but a little bit into the second quadrant. So here are applications of the double angle um, formula. The sum of two angles formula gets us there. Um, and let me just say one more thing. If we look really quickly, see how quick I can do this. If you subtract the angles instead of adding them, 
um, what it does is it changes the two signs here. And sort of the reason it does is that cosine of negative angles is just cosine of the positive. Um, so when you replace beta with negative beta, these cosines don't care. But these signs both move the negative out front, like that, and so it changes what used to be a plus into a minus and what used to be a minus into a plus. And so these are the difference of two angles formulas. I don't think it's useful to memorize them. If you're going to do a difference of two angles, you can just remember that sine is an odd function and cosine is an even function and just be okay with that. Um, but it's just worth noting that they're there. So there's one thing that you should know by the end of this video, um, both the sum and difference formulas. And then the other things that you should know um, are the double angle formulas. And I believe that takes us all through everything we were hoping to cover. So go ahead, do the homework, and I will see you in class.